everyone, my name is Kira, I am 24 and I am going to talk to you guys today about my experience with COVID and the things that I've been dealing with post-COVID. So, um, I mean, first of all, I was even debating if I should even put this information on the internet, but uh, first of all, I think it's super important for everyone to be aware of the things that other people are experiencing and I think that my experiences can bring stuff to the table um, and then second of all I'm really really hoping that this could reach someone who may or may not have been dealing with the same exact things and potentially could relate to me and maybe we could talk I'll leave my email below if anyone has any more questions on my experiences or wants to give some input or talk about your experiences that would be fabulous or put it in the comments whatever works for you so I'm just going to go through like the timeline of what I have experienced and the symptoms and everything that I had gone through. So uh, I'm just going to try to make this as emotionless as possible and keep it factual and yeah whatever because I don't know I've already shed enough tears over this so we don't need to do that here. And for those of you who are my friends and family, I love you guys and thank you so much for just your support and, I don't know, just wishing me well because those little messages can mean a lot, especially if you're having a really crappy day. So thank you guys. I love you. I have a really great support system. So yeah. All right, let's get to it. So I'm sorry if I'm looking over here. I have, I wrote everything on an envelope, so I'm prepared to say the least. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I potentially contracted COVID anywhere between like the end of February and all the way through March 19th. I had taken a trip out of country and also was around people from Europe. So it's really hard to say uh, how long it was in my system before it started to affect me and potentially got me when my immune system was at a lower point. But yeah, so those are the days that I could have contracted it. It's really hard to say. Looks like I went in on March 29th for an office visit, thinking I had uh, a sinus inf infection. <laughs> I forgot what it was called. I had, my head felt like it was gonna explode like a balloon. I remember I uh, had my ears were really, they were in pain. I couldn't find my struggle words. So my ears were in pain and my head was exploding and I just felt so tired, like you know that when you're so tired and so sick that like your body just feels like numb like you can't feel your limbs really like you can but you can't <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense I hope someone can relate to that but yeah so uh, my body was just tired and she diagnosed me with a sinus infection said she couldn't really see too much in my ear but it could be in my middle ear so she gave me some antibiotics uh, Fast forward to April 8th, those antibiotics hadn't helped at all, so I had a phone visit because at that point uh, COVID was becoming more of a, a bigger issue, so I didn't want to go into an office just in case. And I do remember uh, feeling not much different. I do remember feeling uh, kind of more like there's pressure on my chest, not enough to be super concerned, and I was... Or I didn't, at that point, lose my sense of taste and smell. I hadn't gotten a fever, and I remember at that point in April, everyone was saying, fever, fever, fever is the biggest thing to look for. So I was like, I'm probably okay in the back of my head, thinking it's a potential or a possibility that it could be COVID. Sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> but it also had been a long time since March, the end of March 19th, which would have been the last day that I potentially could have contracted it. So I was like, uh, it's probably fine. So I got another round of a different antibiotic, a stronger one, hoping that that would be my cure-all and I would be able to go on my merry little way. Little did I know. <laughs> so it looks like April 14th, I was on another phone call with another doctor um, doing a phone visit. <laughs> and they had said start thinking about it being COVID, start looking for more signs, and uh, she gave me the same antibiotic, just like an extension, thinking, what's the harm? Well, I know it's not great for your gut at all, so I don't like taking antibiotics, but 
whatever will make me feel better. And I do remember at that point there had become a sharp pain that was starting to kind of radiate through uh, the left side of my chest and had was radiating through my back. So that I was pretty concerned about and keeping track of day by day how that was feeling. Um, I do remember after the 14th sometime and before my next visit, my sense of taste came back, but not my smell. What else? I think I covered all those symptoms in between them. So, then April 23rd was when things got bad, <laughs> to say the least. So, at that point, I was like, okay, this chest pain is different. And my inhaler wasn't really helping much. If those For those of you who have asthma, um, know kind of that pain of wheezing or the feeling of like wheezing. It wasn't that. It was something completely different. Which, sorry, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna forget stuff, so I'm just gonna backtrack. I have asthma, but previous to this, um, I had been in the best shape of my entire life. I've never once had an asthma attack. I was so, so in shape in February of 2020. Like, it was ridiculous. I did a 23 mile cross country ski race. So, I don't know. I didn't. It, I yeah I was I was at the end of the day I have asthma I was a uh, high risk person so but I really like I was so healthy it's I'm sad <laughs> I'm sad I'm not there anymore but um, okay back to the timeline so April twenty third the chest pain was crazy the pressure or the pressure was basically like someone took a pillow like this and just put it on it's like that <laughs> just like a pillow to the face holding against you I don't know how I was to explain it um another one that I've used to explain to people is put your fingers on your nose like this just the tiniest bit just let let just enough air in and out so that you can actually feel there's air but not closed off all the way so that is very close to what it felt like. Very, very close. So inhaler wasn't helping. The chest pain was getting worse. And it was on my left side. So I was worried that it was my heart. And yeah, I think the ear pressure was still there. No fever. Still tired. I think that's it. Um, so at the ER on the 23rd, they had done a chest x-ray, a heart ultrasound, an EKG, uh, blood work, uh, what else, I think that's all they did, to be honest, they did some more tests, like blood, like tests on my blood, but I don't know what they did exactly, but basically, I, they came back saying that I looked very healthy, like on paper, I looked so healthy, oh, another thing, my oxygen levels while I was laying down were fine, but as they were going to release me, um, that, and they had done a COVID test, but I wasn't going to get that back until the next morning. So as they were going to release me, my O2 levels dropped to 85. So that's a red flag. They had sent me down, given me some my some inhaler, some, oh uh, gosh, what's it called? I don't know, it's just like the res generic rescue inhaler. And then my O2 levels went back up. I walked around a little bit. I was fine. I was discharged. Um... I was basically told that it was probably a panic attack. A panic attack. A panic attack. They really didn't believe that it was COVID at that point. A panic attack. Seriously, people? Anyways, I'm going to try and make this video like 20 minutes. So I'm going to keep going. Um, I know I'm going to miss stuff, but if you have any questions, um, like I said, comment, email. All right, so panic attack. The next morning, got my test results back. I was positive. The craziest thing is that at that point in time, I got a call from, I believe the state called me, and I was cleared. I was literally cleared. My, based on my symptoms, it had been two weeks since I had been exposed. Based on my symptoms, I was cleared to go out in public again. 
as I was literally tested positive. I know that's different now. I believe that you have to get tested twice and get two negatives. Uh, I don't even, but I don't think that's the factor to get, to go out in public. I don't know. It's changed so much and it's changing so fast and that's to be expected. But I was cleared to go out in public by the state of Minnesota at that point. A day after I tested positive. Are you kidding me? Uh, so anyways, that happened. And, um, where am I? Sorry, my brain's just like, bloop, bloop. So, between the 23rd and the 26th, which I went to the ER again on the 26th, I remember just being hell. Sorry to swear on here, but it was hell. Worst days I've ever had in my entire life. I was not able to distract myself from the sharp pain and the pressure of breathing. I have literally felt like I was manually forcing my breaths and I was terrified that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't breathe again. Like the next breath would just not happen. So that was terrifying to say the least. Uh, I couldn't even watch TV. I couldn't hold a conversation without just being angry and feeling like I couldn't focus. Uh, I found that showers were a little bit distracting because I just turned, it up, turned them up so hot that it would be burning my skin and that would distract me. So yeah, nothing helped. My inhaler didn't help, nothing helped. Uh, after a couple days of that and not being able to sleep at night because I was scared I wouldn't breathe again, I went to the ER again just because at that point they were saying that COVID can change so fast in your body, your O2 levels can drop. Uh, you can develop pneumonia overnight. So I went in on the 26th again, wanted a chest x-ray just to make sure everything looked good, uh, see if they had any other remedies for me. And chest x-ray looked fabulous. I looked really healthy again. They didn't do blood work, but basically said, nothing we can do, bye. <laughs> so luckily over the 27th and the 28th, it got immensely better. I remember like, I mean, it sucked still, but it wasn't like, I felt like I was gonna die, basically. So that was good. Um, uh, between 26 and my next appointment, or my next ER visit was June 13th. It was up and down, nonstop, just a roller coaster. At first I'd feel like I was doing good, and then it would drop again, back up, boom. I don't know what that noise was, but yeah. So I was dealing with Still to this day, I still have, my ears are clogged. I would get the body tired and then I'd feel great for a couple days and then back to tired and then great and up and down. Um, the sharp pain and the pressure just like ever so slowly getting better. To this day, they're not anywhere close to normal. Let me just tell you guys, I feel nowhere close to how I felt in February nowhere and I don't think I will for a long time but ever so slowly like week by week by month by month getting better uh so yeah that, that there's just a lot of up and down in between April 26th and June 13th but I went back on June, June 13th I remember I was at home uh, where my parents live and I went on a bike ride and I went two blocks literally two blocks and I felt like I was going to pass out so still dealing with it then I ended up going to the ER when I was there because I was dealing with more pressure than I had even for a couple weeks before that so I was like okay it's not getting better it's getting worse I should go get this checked out and I had gone, gone to like an urgent care but they sent me to the ER so they did, again, chest x-ray, EKG, CT scan this time. So that was my first CT scan. Blood work. This doctor was just so on top of everything. Um, really, really wanted to get down to the source of what was wrong with me. And that was at the, probably the first time where I really felt like someone really, really cared and really, really wanted to figure this out like here and now. So um, ended up with a diagnosis of costochondritis. Again, on paper, I look like the healthiest person ever. If you don't know what costochondritis is, it's basically like a sprain in your chest walls and like around my lungs. It's also called devil's grip. 
basically just feels like someone's squeezing my lungs. Inhaler doesn't help. Uh, the best thing that I've ever discovered is that it actually feels great to ice it because, I mean, if you think about it, if you sprain your arm, you can just wrap it a little bit, ice it, and after, I don't know, a couple of weeks, it'll feel better because, well, you're not using it. You can't stop breathing. You can't stop using your body, right? Unless I'm just laying down and doing nothing all day, uh, then it may get better, but unfortunately, I can't do that. I have to work, so. Uh, yeah, I had discovered costochondritis. That was great. I was able to do some research on that try and figure out what would make me feel better. Still getting out of breath at that point, going up and down stairs even, um, still to this day I am. But I can tell you that it has been, again, just slowly and slowly ever been getting better. My ears still feel clogged. No one has ever said anything about that. Uh, so I don't know what that's about, but they check them out every time. They say that they look fine. So, but they still are clogged and they click every time that I swallow. So I'm kind of, I don't know, maybe I'm being negative, <laughs> but I really don't think that I ha my hearing's going to ever be back to how it was before, <laughs> which is really sad, but it probably will be guys. I'm probably just being dramatic, but <laughs> yeah. So July 6th, I decided to make an appointment and establish myself with the primary care physician and man, that was the best decision I've ever made. Uh, she was the best, and I'm so happy that I got her as my primary care physician. She definitely checked me out more and kind of reassured that that diagnosis of costochondritis was correct. I got some anti-inflammatories. They're non-steroid, but to use like on the days where it's really bad or days I know I'm going to be doing a lot of work or moving just to kind of alleviate that stress, and those have been really great they're not like they don't cure it all the way but they do definitely alleviate pain so that has been nice I still have been like putting ice on my chest and my back and honestly that feels so amazing like best thing ever I've taken a couple ice baths oh it feels so great uh, so yeah that was that and then on July 7th I was exposed to another <laughs> another another positive case and moral of the story of this one is you can probably be, or they're now saying that you can be infected again. I was experiencing a little bit more tightness in my chest than normal. I was so tired for like three or four days. I had a fever of 99.6, which my blood usually, or my blood, uh, my body temp usually runs a little bit lower. So for me, that was kind of on the higher side of, or the lower side of a fever, I should say. Um, so it was July 9th, my birthday, which, uh, sucked. Couldn't really do anything, because, yeah, I'm still in quarantine since then. It's the 21st, but I'm still self-quarantining. But, I should say this, I was tested negative, but I don't know. I was feeling more ill. It could have been a cold or something I caught, but it was definitely more than just the costochondritis that I was experiencing. I went into, so my primary care physician got me into a lung specialist and we did an EKG again and an x-ray again. Everything looked fine. My COVID test came back negative. So I honestly don't know what to say about that besides it was more than the costochondritis that I was feeling and I don't know what to say about it. Maybe the test was incorrect or I mean I doubt it was but it might have been just a small relapse or something I don't know how to explain that but anyway so today is July 21st and unfortunately now a very valued member of my family is in the hospital and has COVID is on oxygen and has terrible lung issues so I'm just not going to get into that otherwise I'll get super emotional but that sucks a lot and I know exactly how it feels. Actually, I, I know that I didn't have a bad case. I know that my case was probably an average case. I know that like my boyfriend didn't experience anything and those people that I know have experienced COVID have had it for like two weeks and they're good. But now there is someone in my life that is probably going to experience it worse than I am and I cannot even fathom that. And to be alone in the hospital dealing with this 
heart like literally breaks my heart because even I was at home and my boyfriend was taking care of me and it still just was the worst thing I've ever experienced so I think that is everything that I have to say so basically to this day still have the ear stuff still I guess I don't know what that small relapse was about I'm hoping that was a one-time thing but that happened um I still feel a pressure in my chest it's I can tell I'm gonna show you guys so it kind of like up here like I can feel it it's like a sore muscle almost but like uh a little bit of pain when I press so I press up here it's sore and then I go down here and like right here I can feel it is so sore and swollen and then like over here a little bit and I can feel it a little bit on my right side too so it's like right in here and then like along my rib cage I can feel it in here and a little bit on like my sides too so I can tell super inflamed in there it seems to be slowly getting better and so that is a positive I definitely could have had it way worse than a lot of people are experiencing um, you may think that you're like the healthiest person like I did and your world can crumble because of this and I just wanted to tell you guys and tell the world I guess that this could happen to anyone in your life um, I know there is such a big like government versus citizens thing going on a thing uh, a lot of people are worried that there's a control that this is all uh, has motives of controlling a citizens um, and whether that's true or not I think that it is so important to protect our communities and the people in our communities and I know that we are all just trying to make decisions uh, that are best for ourselves, our communities, and our families right now, but all I ask is for a little bit of empathy and to put yourself in other people's shoes. I truly, truly don't understand how saying that, oh, but the death rates, they're lower, is even a valid argument. You know what I'm saying? Because any death is too many and I know this is a huge political thing right now 2020 is somehow became this huge political fight and I think it's important to have um, right now but there are just some fights that aren't worth it at the moment because you may th be thinking that you're fighting the, the government or the leaders in our country but really you're just fighting other citizens and the decisions that you make, such as not wearing a mask and not social distancing, could truly, truly actually end someone's life and or affect it long term. And I know the, the statistics, the statistics, like, oh, if I'm healthy, but like, we're not talking about you right now. We're talking about the elderly. We're talking about the people who are higher risk. And we need to protect each other. Are you kidding me? We where is the love you know what I'm saying like I just want to start singing where is the love by black eyed peas because really where is the love and I know that the set there is a small chance that masks may or may not be effective but come on just wear a mask I understand if you can't I know that there are people there's a certain population that actually cannot wear a mask and that's fine and I can totally respect that and I really don't think they should if it's going to be affecting their health or whatever but like for those of you who can wear a mask like it's just a small little task and if you don't do that small little tiny task it could affects someone's life so much bigger than you could even fathom so please 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 just think just think things through a little bit okay let's stop getting angry at each other about little things and start just spreading the love okay do you guys need me to start singing where's the love by black eyed peas to get my point across because I will <laughs> all right I think I've ranted enough um Stay healthy, 
I really, really hope and I really hope that you never have to deal with COVID. I know there are other health implications out there and there are probably other people dealing with worse things, but this is just something that we don't need. And if we can prevent it from getting worse, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, yeah, let's make a change in this world. Let's stop COVID. Stop COVID 2020. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm good here. Uh, take or leave what I've said, or take it with a grain of salt if you want to. I don't know, however that saying goes. If you don't want to listen to me, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, totally okay, and I can respect that, but like, where is the love? Okay, bye. <laughs>